Hey guys, Mr. Johnny here. In this video, yes, it's another one of these. I'm kinda, I'm gonna put it straight away. I'm kinda pissed off at myself for uploading these kind of videos because I get a lot of comments. Lots of comments actually in languages that I don't understand to start with. And even if they are in English, I still cannot understand them. Because they are written like... Guys, you really need to understand that these videos are more for infotain infotainment. They are supposed to be slightly informational and not just a how-to video actually. It's great that when you watch it you see you learn something new, that's great and all, but just don't take them as a tutorial. <laughs> oh, as a tutorials, all right? So, this television is a sharp, as you can see there, probably. I, I didn't even turn it on yet. So, first thing first, Get my watt meter, and we'll, we shall see. Does it consume any power and what it does? I don't know, maybe it works. Alright, there you can see a meter. There's a stupid glare on it. Alright, fine. Now the watt meter is right here, dangling on the wire. And I'm gonna use regular range, which has an 8 amp fuse on it. I'm gonna turn it on, trying to try not to destroy my anonymity, because if some of if only a one from my local asshat gonna know. That I'm doing this, I will have a hard time explaining stuff like that. All right, cool. You saw a spike, right? A spike of power. Right now, the scale is one. What you see, the number you see there is directly in watts. So right now it is about under 10 watts and you saw a spike which is rather large. What that was? That was nothing but a degauss coil and it is still powered through a ZPTC which I can even show you. Again trying to... <sighs> I'm gonna just pause. Okay, PTC looks like this, that's a part we are talking about. It has three leads. Basically it's two elements inside PTC elements which change their resistance with temperature and when the temperature rises so does their resistance. Now we don't see... oh we do see actually. Oh Johnny you muppet! Eh. See, that's why I said that these videos are not for and are not a tutorials. They are just me infotainment. We have about seven watts there, and we do have a standby LED there glowing. Hmm. They did provide me with a remote, so let's try. Oh. All right. I'm, I, 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 I am very disappointed. I'm gonna keep an eye on power because I can see straight away we have some retrace lines. Are they? Yes, they are. They are slanted lines. That's what they are called. Mm, power seems normal for this size of a TV. But see. Check out the screen, alright? See these lines? They go from right to left and they slope down. 
These are called retrace lines. Normally, they should be unvisible for you when the set is tuned properly and it doesn't have problems. There is a um, part of the circuit called the blanking circuit, which makes sure you don't see those retrace lines. But I do. It can also happen if you make the if you put the brightness control too high the, the remote uh, the remote is gunked up it doesn't really react now it doesn't even want to turn on that's awesome but we have a problem that I can fix because it's a real problem not just intermittent rubbish which I hate channel controls are just missing awesome See? picture is just pressed in all very hard so all right I already made a fool of myself but I'm gonna proceed I'm gonna pop the car off and we shall see what is waiting for us inside. All right, I took the screws out, and yeah, I kind of, kind of wanted to say what can be a reason. A reason can be too high screen voltage. Screen is a grid, one of the grids on the tube. The tube is picture tube. Let's pop the cup. Oh boy, it's tight. Trying to not poke my fingers inside and get a nice low zap. Come on. Oh, why does it always have to happen? So yeah, long story short, my videos are supposed to be infotainment. Save your time and do not ask me in especially do not ask me how to how to fix your TV, especially if you don't if you can't really if you can't explain the problem. Because some comments I receive are just my TV have no picture but there is sound. All right, good for you. You don't see ugly faces on the screen. I, I can't tell what's wrong. There are millions of, pe of possible problems. So I did not discharge picture tube yet, so I have to stay away from the circuit but what I'm gonna do now is to just give a quick glance at the board the board looks moderately dusty if you ask me it looks like some ah yeah yeah bumped my my head into this edge not pleasant looks like somebody's been there because the chip you can see that big ass 1.27 millimeter pitch plastic dual inline package has uh, somebody wiped the dust off of it so somebody's been there that's for sure uh, it's always I do not it's like I'm gonna just probably sound like Louis Rossman I don't get the easy stuff anymore <laughs> I just get the stuff which somebody tried to repair but failed oh look at that look at that brown capacitor brown big capacitor it says Nichicon is it true or not I don't know if it's original one it might be the transformer looks a little puny if you ask me that with a yellow tape this I see on a heatsink which you can see which kinda resembles TDA 2050 is a vertical deflection <laughs> Mm 
I don't see any bullets with capacitors, to be honest. But that's another problem. Like, so many people think that capacitor is only bad when it's bulged. It's so misleading that I, that I can't stress this point uh, uh, enough. I mean, like, the capacitor doesn't have to be bulged to be bad. It may look perfectly fine visually, but it will be still bad. This resistor is a bit wonky. Horizontal output transistor is in a ridiculous little heatsink with a lot of dust on it, which is not a surprise because it has a high voltage on it. Mm, so far so good, I don't see any bullish capacitor, so I might get away with just adjusting screen control, although why the hell... <clears throat> what... how the hell did it happen? I mean like... The screen control is one of these. See the one on the bottom called screen? Hmm? That's the one. And... Uh, actually, when I look... close to it. I see that the focus control is nicely sealed with dust bunnies but the screen control doesn't look to be. So dust bunnies probably left when somebody was mucking around with it because see there, that's what I'm talking about. It's like dust bunnies on these televisions are like a seal like a warranty seal. Ay, ay, ay. The set looks pretty new, actually. If you ask me. There's only one speaker, though. And there is a place for the other one. Down there. Ah, uh, there it is. Now. I don't know. I'm just gonna twiddle with the... Uh, ay, ay, ay. Twiddle with um, the screen control and we shall see. It should help definitely, but I don't get... I don't understand what's the original problem. It's like I hate it when people don't describe the problem and they say like, it doesn't work. I don't know what's even worse. Commenters that don't say what's wrong with their TVs, but I don't have to fix them at least. <coughs> or people will just give you TV to repair and it doesn't work, it, there is no picture. But when you get it, you see that there is no picture, no sound, no nothing. Awesome. Alright, TV is plugged in. Without watt meter now, just purely into the mains. Okay. I can see the channel button there, let me show you. The little tactile push buttons. If I shine the light into the right spot. Got people barging in as always, but maybe you'll be able to see a push button right there in the hole. I can't focus on it because the phone just refuses to, but there it is. I'm gonna go and try to press it because that's a channel up button. Usually the TV goes out of standby if I do that. Yes, it does. Awesome. I can hear the horizontal. I can see the smoke. I'm kidding. Same problem. So, let's, let's go and trip over this bell and just put it on a screen control there and show you the result it's so inconvenient that's the screen control down you see nothing then you see retrace lines and extreme brightness which you shouldn't do for a long time because 
you might kill horizontal output transistor. But the thing is that even with low brightness, all right, even if I turn the screen control low enough, I still have retrace lines. You know what? I'm kind of afraid to say that it might be the that big ass deep package which is dead because that's the thing with this how convenient is that I just touched the plug and it fell out and you know it. that's the chip see that's an only big ass chip in the entire thing and if it's dead the price on them, if if you can find them, the price on them is just too much for owners of these TVs and they just toss them out. Which is good for guys like me. If they toss it my way, I say, yes, of course. Because I can pull the speaker out, I can pull the flyback out, use little heating there, reuse that small that ferrite transformer you see with yellow tape on it, alright? Some of the capacitors may be actually good enough to use them for a short period of time and then replace with a new one. These capacitors are good enough to be used in prototypes if you don't have a new one to put in there. Mm. Yeah. God damn it. Well, the thing is that <laughs> this chip does everything here, right? It generates a horizontal signal and it also generates a blanking circuit mm, blanking circuit <laughs> a blanking pulse which turns off the guns so you don't see the oh oh so you don't see the those retrace lines but why did I say oh well, oh, because let's take a look here and on the neck board, that's how this board is called. I do see a few packages. See those um, three pins which are marked Q871, 883, 872, 887. Those are transistors if you look on the other side. Here you can see there's a bunch of them, right? Those can be video amplifiers. Basically, that's a transistor, a cathode of which is connected to the resistor. And the other end of that resistor goes to the... Oh, you muppet! Video amplifier transistor is connected in this way. Collector of that transistor is connected to a resistor. And the other end of that resistor is connected to the cathode of the gun. So there are three transistors there. You might ask why there is four there. Well, I don't know. Actually, there are five or more. Six. Oh boy. The place is just full. Any road. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take a look at them. Yeah. See those resistors, those green resistors which are st stood off the board. These are cathode limiting resistors and so you should see three of them on the board and sure enough you do. I'm gonna show you closer there. You see there are three resistors there, right? And a buttload of transistors. So that's exactly what I was talking about. I'm not talking about... Yes, I am. <sighs> this board even has some SMD components on it. See that small package? Mm, it seems like 0603 to me. It's a bit too tiny for 0805. It's a package there. C880. The other ones... Yeah, they're all 0603s, if you ask me, because I sold the right of files quite often, I know how they look. <coughs> Alright, so, 
let me turn it on again and I will see. <laughs> the thing is that one of the resistors, damn it, one of the transistors can go can go leaky or better yet shorted. So then you will have that gun permanently connected to ground, the cathode of that gun permanently connected to ground through that resistor, and you will see retrace lines and that color. And which color do we have there? I'm gonna reckon it's a red gun doing this shebang because it looks red to me. It doesn't look so on camera and understand that, but it's kind of reddish in real life. Let me get myself zapped. Yeah, it is really red now. So I reckon it's a red gun which is doing it. So now I need to find the red gun. Hoik. Uh, now the plug is stubborn. Get the hell out. Now I need to find the red gun there. How do I do that? Well, I look at the seal screen and... And I don't find sh... Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> too bad, too bad. Some on some neck boards you they provide you a seal screen which tells which pin is which. This one just tells me their number, which is which again doesn't tell me sh Well it's so hard. It doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> Any room, so I'm gonna go and probably hoik all the transistors out. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Eh, why all? I need to hoik only three transistors out to find the the bad one. I'm not interested in hoiking all of them out. I need to hoik only three. And in that, in those three, there might be one bad, which is on the red cathode. But I don't know what red cathode is. But I do know that the transistors responsible for cathodes are connected to these resistors I shown you previously. So I just need to trace out the circuitry and find all three transistors which are connected to these resistors and I'll be golden. Decided to show it in the video because some smart ass will... Oh, that's a healthy high voltage. That would have set me across the room. Because some smart ass will go there and say that you didn't discharge CRT, you so dumb. Um, if I wasn't discharging CRTs, I wouldn't make these videos because of the reason. And that reason because I would be paralyzed or dead underground or in form of an ash, whatever. Another safety tip is you should really go with this grounded screwdriver and touch each and every pin on the neck board of the CRT I mean because uh, there is also another high voltage there which is called focus voltage it's an order of a couple hundred volts usually 800 volts or so in this kind of a set and how to easily find it see this box there that's a box where a spark gap is connected it is there and it is there for a focus voltage and you can see the fat lead coming to it so it must carry high voltage doesn't it so you just go and touch it there and I don't see no sparks I just touched each and every one I should be safe enough now the only voltage which can zap me is 160 volts on here which I don't really care about <laughs> yeah I looked at it for a little bit longer and I thought that those resistors green resistors I was talking about look a, a bit wrong in value because they say they are a brown green orange which is 15 kilo ohms it's too high for a cathode resistor and it's not it's just a pull-up resistor for the collector of the transistor which drives the cathode and the actual cathode limiting resistor is one of these see this little 
red, violet, red, 2.7k, now that's more like it. There are three of them as you can see, one, two, and three. <coughs> so then I traced where they go and they go to the pins on the transistors, middle pin there, so that's one channel, middle pin there, that's another channel, middle pin there, Q hard 870, 871 and 872. And the other ones are there for for something else, I don't know. I don't care. Couldn't care less <laughs> at the moment. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually gonna cheat because I didn't desolder anything yet. I'm gonna go and short the collector to the emitter on each of these transistors, which I marked with a sharpie, and we'll see which one will be red. And I'm gonna hoik that out and test only one instead of all three because I'm lazy I decided to do it a little bit different I'm gonna connect alligator clip to ground one place that is you know for for certain that it is ground it's this strap on the outer echo deck and I'm gonna go connect in 1.2k resistor to each of those collectors I mentioned previously which I, I marked with Sharpie I'm gonna find the right channel and I'm gonna dive into it because I'm pretty certain that pretty damn sure that 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 the right channel is a culprit so guys I'm gonna go and do just that and there is a mirror which will let you see what's on the screen okay here we go. Darn. I need to go and turn it on first. Yeah. Okay, now it's turned on, so... You guys can see the picture there, can you? In the mirror. So... Can I just go? And touch those. I need another mirror for myself, probably. Oh well. So so so. Yes, it's too damn fine. I need another mirror for myself. Okay, got myself a mirror. Let's do that. Oh, very bright. Oh, no, that's a blue one. See? Okay, so the bottom is blue, green, so the top one is red. Over here. See? Red, green, and blue. <laughs> so it doesn't seem shorted, but it might be leaky. Because the screen is definitely reddish, if you ask me. It's more red than anything. I'm pretty confident that, yeah, that the chip might be dead, but... I'm gonna... I ain't gonna call it until I... Until I'm sure. So I hoik those transistors out, they look actually fine on the transistor tester, so I'm just gonna go try to turn it on without them seeing how other channels look like. Uh, if they are the same, it's more like it's most likely that the chip is dead. So the next thing you know, I turn them on without the transistors in the right channel, see the empty places there. It's still red. What the hell? Is it like the oh, heater to cathode short again? Usually it is much more leaky than that. Oh, it, maybe it's a leakage. Maybe it's a heater of uh, filament, I mean, of the red gun is leaky to the because one end of the heater is on ground, it shouldn't be like that. It should it should have no red color now. <laughs> All right, that's kind of interesting.
And there is a bit of this, which is kind of a bit of vertical non-linearity problem going on. I don't know. I really don't know. The picture ball seems to be a bit fussy. So I'm gonna next thing I gonna do is I'm probably gonna go and power the filament, the heater, from from an external transformer. I'm gonna disconnect it from the existing circuit and power it from a isolated transformer and we'll, sh we'll see will this problem remain there or not because it should not look like that with those, transi with those transistors out it's, it's wrong, very wrong alright, there is a transformer I hooked it up look inside the tube you can see no blowy I'm gonna turn it on There you go. You can see that it glows. There. Here is a cord goes to the transformer. Gonna turn it on now. And we'll see. Both tracks are cut and we still have the same stuff. Woo! I'm getting bored now. I'm gonna do the so guys, I was about to give up, then I searched the board for really bad capacitors, found two. This one is, was in vertical section. This one will fix that little non-linearity non problem. And found this small one in power supply section, which is made with some integrated circuit, not a transistor, that's a 5-pin package, 0 to 20. Now this device behaves a lot different, I'm gonna show you that. Just take a look at this. See? It kind of works. It is on a verge. There is something wrong. I measured the board and I found quite a lot of crappy capacitors. Not terrible like those two, but quite crappy nonetheless. But what we saw there kinda proves that this integrated circuit is alright. So it might be up to a bunch of bad capacitors around it. There are these guys, this one, that one, or these two, I don't remember for sure, but there are a few hundred microfarad 6.3 volt rated capacitors around and I've measured them to be meh, not great at all. So I'm gonna go and swap those out, maybe it will work, who knows. That's the first time I encounter this kind of problem. It's bizarre. And when, when you saw that when I accidentally pressed channel button, it switched to channel 1 and I then again saw the snow and some on-screen display. So that's good. That means that the chip just was closing, shutting off the guns because it didn't like something. Ripple on the power supply or maybe some incorrect voltage on the power rails. We'll see. I will swap those capacitors out and we shall see. Tada! The TV is working now. All I did is I changed a few capacitors that I told you about. This for 7016 in vertical section. That improved the vertical performance. Come on, you blind. There, for the vertical. This one in a power supply so it doesn't blow up. This one near the, that big chip. Same applies to this, uh, or this one near the tuner. 
this one needs a big chip as well and now the thing works and if I'm gonna apply turn on my camera you see that there is a picture on the screen don't worry it will of course no it's pretty sharp but the thing is that I mucked around with the screen control there and at first it was cutting out but then when I backed the screen control off a little bit it went to normal because the so-called BCL was kicking in BCL is stands for beam current limiter let me demonstrate there if I'm gonna turn it on you will see retrace lines and see and the same stuff and if I'm gonna back it off See, at first it uh, it is greenish, then it kind of balances out. That is because of the auto white balance function. Actually went and used the blue screen to set the screen control. But as you can see, it works. So that's that. Turn it on again. It works strokes badly but the picture is nice and sharp i'm gonna tweak it again and it will be ready for a test run and then ready to be used by the customer thanks for watching see ya